How to use Slack for beginners in 2023 full Slack demo. Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing great and are having an amazing and incredible day. I bring you back with yet another tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be discussing about Slack and we're going to be going into great detail on what Slack is so please do make sure to watch this video till the end because it's going to be very informational and very in-depth. So yeah, we're going to be talking about it all so please just make sure to listen to everything I have to say. Now we're going to get into Slack, we're going to write Slack over here and we're going to come to slack.com. Here we can see Slack is your digital HQ and if we go into their website we can see that uh, an account of mine is already signed in but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign myself out to show you how things actually work on Slack. So over here we're going to go ahead and click on create an account. So once we click on create an account here it says first enter your email. So obviously we're going to do that. I'm going to be using a temporary mail today but if you're going to do this for the long run and like if you're in a large scale or even a small scale business or even if you're like an entrepreneur uh, that wants to use Slack, I'd say use your proper email. I'm just going to use a temporary for the video purposes. Now it says check your email for a code. So we're going to come here, we're going to see our email. It's Z7E3NB. So Z7E3NB. So once it verifies us, here it says create a new Slack workspace. So yeah, basically you can either create a workspace or you can uh, join or open a workspace with your other um, associated emails. So before creating our workspace, what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss the Slack pricings and plans. So if you were to go here into the Slack.com pricing and plans, uh, we can see that obviously there's the free version that we're going to be using. Uh, and it's like there's no trial or anything like free is totally free. It's unlimited. So you can use free whenever, like till whenever you want to. So there's the free plan. There's the pro plan, the business plus plan and the enterprise grid. So in the pro plan, we can see that it's a hefty $7.25 per month. And all the benefits are unlimited message history, unlimited apps and integrations, unlimited lightweight voice first huddles and secure work with other companies using Slack connect channels. In the business plus plan, we can see we have a $12.50 plan. Uh, and you can get 99.99% guaranteed uptime, user provisioning and deprovisioning, SAML based single sign on and data exports for all messages. And obviously we finally have the enterprise grid for which we have to contact them if we want to get the price and plans. And this is like the full Slack plan. And on this you can get the whole package of everything you need on Slack. So yeah, these are all the comparing charts. Uh, I just recommend using a free one like if you're a startup solopreneur, even if you're like in a small scale business, a free Slack, it works amazing. You don't need to get an upper plan. But if you're in a large scale business or maybe even like in a huge organization and you want to start a team Slack network, then I'd recommend going with the pro or business plan. And surprise, that totally depends on if you actually want to go that long. But uh, yeah, it all depends on you, I guess. So now that we've discussed all the price and plans, let's go ahead and create ourselves a workspace. So we're going to click on create a new Slack workspace and it's going to load us up into this interface where it says, what's the name of your company or team? So they say this will be the name of your Slack workspace. Choose something that your team will recognize. So we're going to call this Slack workspace um, John's workspace. We're just going to call it that. I'm going to make sure to... There we go. And uh, you can turn this on, like let anyone with your uh, business domain dot com join this workspace. So what that will do is like anyone will automatically be invited with this um, domain name over here. So we're going to click on next. And once we do that over here, it says who else is on your workspace team. So you can start adding the emails if you want to. So you can do that. Or you can just copy the invite link and paste it into maybe your uh, group of your business. And from there on out, your people can join it. Or you can just automatically skip this step and add people later. So I'm going to skip it right now. So here it says, what's your team working on right now? This could be anything, a project, campaign, event, or the deal you're trying to close. 
So I, you can put in, just put in project and then click on next. And once you do that, here we are. Our workspace has been properly created and this is your basic interface to your workspace. So yeah, over here, we're gonna start doing all the whatnots and I'm gonna be sharing all the features with you. But before getting into that, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna go into our settings. And once we go in our settings, what we're gonna do is we're gonna configure our workspace settings and different permissions. Now you're probably wondering why should we do that? Because according to this, we're gonna optimize our workspace and uh, yeah, it's, it just makes life much easier for us. So let's get into this. So first of all, let's discuss these settings. Joining this workspace. Choose how people join your workspace by accepting an email invitation or sign up with an email address from an approved domain. If you enable this setting to let people with an email address on an approved domain join automatically, Slack will generate a link that anyone with an approved email address can use to confirm their email and sign up with this. So if we were to expand this, what you can do, you can set it accordingly, like you can allow invitations and approve invitations for any email address from these domains. So you can write or a certain domain, and if the person has that domain in their email, then they can easily join. Now, if you come here, here it says workspace language, set the language for your workspace. This affects system notifications, Slack bot messages, and sign up emails. Your workspace language is currently set to English US. So let's say you're maybe in Russia or you're in France and you wanna change your uh, workspace language, you can just change it from here and it will change it totally and fully. Over here, it says default channels. Choose the channels new members will automatically be added to. So normally the default channel is general, like uh, if I were to show, this is the default channel, and this is the channel everyone will be added to once they join your workspace. But you can just add a channel, like you have the project channel, and if you wanna add newcomers over here, maybe it has a nice welcome message. So you can add them over here and you can save it. And then which default channel should they start and when they first join your workspace? Again, you can set that up and you can save it and they will automatically join those channels. Then here it says display name guidelines. Explain the guidelines you want your members to follow when they set their display name. So you can set a guideline, like for example, uh, no profanity or no something like that. You can set that up. And once you've done that, all you need to do is save and accordingly, that will be your guideline. Then it comes to name display. If you'd like, Slack can show your members full names instead of their shorter display names. It totally depends on you if you want full names displayed or not. Again, that's totally upon your preference. Here it says email display. Choose whether to display members' email address in their Slack profiles. Again, this is also totally upon you. It all depends on your preferences. Pronouns display, again, on your preference. Do not disturb. Set default to do not disturb hours for members from your workspace. So again, uh, you can set the time, automatically disable notifications from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. So obviously like uh, you can set an off time for your company. Like if your off time is 11.30, you can change the time here to, uh, I'm gonna set it to 11.30. And if your start time is nine, so you can keep it from 11.30 to 9.30 a.m. And you can keep it between that. So in between these times, your Slack workspace will not get any notifications. So here it says channel join and leave messages. Again, uh, show a message when your people join or leave the channels. I would not recommend turning this on because this is a bit too much. But here it says notify of new users. Yes, you can turn this on. If a new user joins the channel, you can turn that on. Calls. Choose how members make calls in Slack. You can use Slack itself or a third party calling app. So you can allow calls and you can allow calling options and much more. Then obviously you can uh, mess around with the Slack mobile app and mobile usage. Then there's the message history, the file history, and obviously this is just your history works. You can also change your workspace icon if you want to, you know, to like give it a nice professional look. So this is totally upon you. If you want to add it, uh, I, I'll just keep it the default workspace icon. And here it says your workspace name and URL. You can change that, but I think you would have to improve your plan for that. And then the final option, which is deleting your workspace. So again, 
these are all your main options. Then we come to permissions. And these are the permissions you give to your Slack members. So obviously in messaging, set who can use at everyone, at channel, and at here. So basically at everyone, basically just uh, tags everyone. At here tags the person who's online and active and at channel basically uh, tags everyone in that specific channel. And over here you can see people who can use at, people who can use channel in here and show a warning when using channel in here, etc. You can set all of that. Invitations, you can require admin's approval. I'd say turn that on because you don't want any random person to be invited. So you can uh, set that. And then in channel management, again, totally depends on you on whatever setting you want for your Slack. Over here in Slack Connect Discoverability, you can see you have different things like choose who can see members, names, and that they use Slack before connecting people with their email address. No one, totally up on you. This is a beta uh, feature, like it's not here, it's coming soon. So again, you can set this accordingly. You have Slack Connect channels and stuff like that, but this is obviously for the pro spaces. You can add custom emojis to, you know, make more participation just you know have a fun environment no one likes at all serious environment and then obviously there's more things like uh, downloads of workflow webhooks and workflow builder workflow creation the most important one is the apps and custom integrations manage permissions for apps and integrations in the app directory so basically you can integrate apps like gmail Trello, Google Drive, Excel, stuff like that. And according to that, you can obviously automate your things, automate emails and stuff like that, just to, you know, make life easier for you. Then there's the authentication tab where you can set different authentications. Uh, this, I don't think the authentication and attachment tab is really necessary for your Slack working. So depends on you. If you want to mess around with this tab, you can totally depending on you. You can also import and export data from maybe some other workspace of yours, or you can also export it from some CSV or text file. You can also export things from your workspace. And yeah, that's pretty much about it with the settings. So uh, once you're in the settings, if I go back to settings and permissions, well, let me wait for that. So once we're in settings over here, we have a feature where it says you can also manage members and roles. So you're probably wondering what members and roles does. So members and roles, basically what you can do is obviously you can invite people over here. So if I were to invite people, I'm gonna enter an email. So let's say I'm gonna invite, you can just invite anyone randomly. And if someone joins, what you can do over here is you can basically edit their permissions. You can change their account type. Like obviously I'm the primary owner of this workspace. So over here, you can uh, give your members different roles. Like you can either make them an admin, you can give them different permissions, like specifically if like maybe you're um, a project head and your like uh, CEO joins the Slack, you can keep your CEO as like a worker with no permission. You will have to give your CEO permission because that's normal work ethic. So yeah, basically you can choose your roles and permissions over here for your whole workspace team. But obviously that most uh, or all of your workspace members will show once they have joined your workspace. So then what you can do is obviously we're going to go back to our workspace. I'm also going to show you how you can sign out of your account. So once you're in your settings tab over here, you can come down and you're here. You have a sign out. So if you click on sign out, we're just going to wait for this to load up. And look at that. We have signed out of our Slack. And to sign ourselves in, I'm just going to go here and I'm going to sign ourselves in. So if you go on slack.com, I'm going to sign myself in really quick. Here we go. And over here, I'm going to put in my work email that we just copied off of Slack. There we go. Sign in with email. Uh, it's going to send us a code on our email. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that real quick. And we're just going to wait for this to load up really quick. And here we have it. He, we have our code R4FSTY. So we're going to go here, R4FSTY. And there we have it. We have properly signed ourselves in. And here we go. Here is our workspace. As you can see, John's workspace. So we're just going to go back here and we're going to mess around with more things. Now you can see up here, it keeps on telling me to open Slack. What that means is uh, it's asking me to open my desktop application. 
So you can also add the desktop application. I'm going to show you that as well. Like uh, I'm going to show you it around the end of the video. So I'm going to click on a use Slack and browser. So it depends on you if you want to use the uh, desktop application. Desktop application also works pretty well, but we're here to talk mostly about the Google application. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to edit our profile and we're going to edit our details. So to edit our profile, we're going to go on customize John's workspace. And obviously over here, what we're going to do is we can add ourselves little emojis and stuff in our different uh, workspace ethics. Then we have our Slack bot. You're probably wondering what a Slack bot is. We're going to discuss this later in the video. So please do stay tuned. Then you have your workspace icons that you can mess around with. Like this is our workspace icon, but if you want to create something totally different for yourself, you can create that as well. And uh, after that, you can just choose to upload it from here. That's how easy and simple it is. Uh, and then there's the statuses and channel prefixes. We're going to get into that later as well. So if we we're, we're like to stay in settings, here we can see we have different account settings for ourselves where uh, if I am to go here, Look at this. This is our account uh, and profile customization and editing place where we can mess around with our account. So here you can see you can add a, a password with two factor authentication. Uh, you can change your time zone if you want to change your language, sign out of all other sessions. You can deactivate your account if you want to, like you can temporarily deactivate it. It's totally upon you. You can set a username for yourself totally upon you. Then if we go in notifications over here, obviously you have all your notifications with your mobile push notifications, your email preferences, you have email notifications, email news and updates, signing notifications, and much, much more. And then finally, if we go in profile, we're going to go and we're going to click on open this link in your browser because we want to stay in our browser and we're just going to wait for this to load up. Here we are. So here it says profile. And obviously here you can start editing your profile. Now, if you want to edit your profile picture, you're going to go here where it says edit and we're going to come here. We're going to, we can change our name. So let's say I want to change it from that to John Leahy. This is my full name. My display name will just be John. Uh, you can create a title like boss, or you can just name yourself project head. You can call yourself that. You can uh, basically record an audio clip where you can obviously name, uh, you can record your name so people don't get it uh, wrong. You can show your pronunciation just for a nice work ethic. And then you can obviously upload a photo. So if we go here, I'm going to show you how you can upload a photo. I'm going to download a stock photo from Pexel. Of like, uh, I'm just going to write something like CEO. I'm going to write that. And if it gives me a photo, here we go. Here we have a photo. I'm just going to download this and we're going to come here. I'm going to go on upload photo and here we go. Here is our photo and you can set its aspect ratio by cropping it around. Here we go. There we are. I'm just going to crop it a bit more to make myself a bit prominent. And yeah, there we go. Then you can just click on save. And once you click on save, what's going to happen is there you go now. And all you need to do now is just click on save changes and look at that there you are. So there's your profile pic with your name, your display name, you can add name pronunciation if you want to, uh, and much, much more. So that is how you edit your profile, stuff like that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, set ourselves a status. Now, you're probably wondering what's a status. So a status uh, is basically your like you can see over here, here it says I am active. Now this is your status. Your status currently is active and you're probably wondering what that has to do with work ethic. It has a lot to do with your work ethic because obviously according to your status, people are going to judge what you're doing right now. So let's say if you're active, but you can't work. So what you can do is you can update your status. Like for example, you can update it to maybe you're in a meeting or maybe you're commuting or you're out sick, vacationing, working remotely or something like that. So let's say I were to do in a meeting and, or you can tell them in a meeting about, uh, let's say the IT team and then remove status after you can set 
whenever you will be free. And once you do that, you're just going to click on save. And yeah, look at that. So when someone hovers over your name, like you're going to be active, but you're going to be actively in a meeting about the IT team and you're going to be free an hour later. So basically that's how you add statuses. And like, it's not necessary that this is the only status you can add. You can add status according to yourselves as well. So you can write uh, out sick, have the flu and it's really bad. And then you can remove the status after the whole day or after the week or whatever, like however bad your uh, sickness is. And yeah, that's basically it. And what your people are going to do is look at that. They can see this little icon beside you. So when they come here, they're going to see John. He is out sick. He has the flu and it's really bad and he's out till tomorrow. And again, if you go in mood, you can clear the status once you're done. Like if you're done before clearing, you can do that again. Go back over here and you can tell them if you're working remotely or if you're commuting, if you're vacationing, all depends on you and stuff like that. So, yeah, but you're probably wondering how can you set it to away? So this this is easy, like under update your status, you're going to see set yourself as a way. And once you do that, look at that. You are away. So there we go. And if you just want to disable that, you can disable it and click on set yourself as active. And there you are. You are now active back again. And you can also pause your notifications, like just come here, pause notifications, and you can pause it for however long you like, like it could be 30 minutes, one hour, two hours until tomorrow, custom, whatever you like. So now what we can do is we're going to uh, go ahead and join ourselves into a channel. So to join a channel, again, what we're going to do is, as I showed you, I'm going to go on slack.com. So here we are. And here we can see I am logged in to my John's workspace account. But if I want to join any channel, obviously, I'm going to need to be invited to it. And once I'm invited to it, I can either join through my email that I'm invited to, like just go to your Gmail inbox or Yahoo inbox. And over there, it's going to say join workspace and it's going to redirect you to the workspace like this. But what you can also do is once you're invited, you come to your slack.com dashboard and here you're going to see your invite. So here uh, workspaces for, you know, you can see it over here and yeah, you're going to see whatever team you want to join into. And once you see what you like, you're going to click on join team. And once you click on join team, it's going to ask for your details and I'm just going to put it in real quickly. So I'm going to add that and you're going to create a unique password for yourself. And once you do that, we're going to click create account. And once that happens, it's going to redirect us to the workspace that we just joined. So I'm going to click on use Slack in your browser and look at this. We have been joined into this workspace that was randomly over here that we were invited to. And look at this. Here we are. We're in the workspace now. And uh, yeah, we have all these members over here. We have all these different channels. And this is the welcome channel where I am welcomed. And yeah, that's basically it. That is how you can join a channel for yourself. But obviously this is joining channels like that's pretty easy and basic stuff. So we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to create our own channel. So let's go and do that. Now to create your own channel, what you're going to do is you're going to come here in channels. And you're going to click on add channel. And once you click on add channel, you can again, browse channels to join them, or you can click on create a channel and we can create ourselves one. So here it says create a channel. Channels are where your team communicates their best when organized around a topic. So marketing, for example, so you're going to set a name. Uh, you can set it to anything like uh, let's name it uh, hashtag or the hashtag is already going to be there. So you can name it, let's say you can name it uh, coding. Like, let's say your project is about IT and this is your coding channel and you can uh, apply a description to it. Like in this space, we are going to be only talking and working around and about coding related to the project. Yeah, that's pretty much about it. And then you can also set this channel to private, like not everyone can join it, only a certain people can join it, like if they are assigned. Uh, you can set that if you want to, or it's totally upon you. 
And do remember that this can be undone. A private channel cannot be made public later. A public can be made private. So yeah, once you do that, you're going to click on create. And once you click on create, you can add people or you can just skip for now like I'm going to do. And look at that. I have a channel called coding. And in this channel, uh, we can see that our description is in the space. We are going to be only talking and working around and about coding related to the project. You can also edit the description if you want to. You can set a channel um, profile picture if you want to. But most importantly, what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to manage our channel. Now you're probably wondering how can we manage our channels? So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to come here where it says get channel details. So we're going to go here and once we're over here, here are all our channels settings. So obviously here is our channel name. You can add a topic for your channel. Like again, we said coding. So you can do that. You can click on save and coding has been saved for your channel. What we can do now is again, you can um, select and draw files if you want to. You can add and remove the members. Here is your different integrations like you can add apps like bring the tools you need into this channel to pull reports, start calls, file tickets and much, much more. You can send emails to all of this channel, like all the members you have in this channel. You can send emails around to all of them. And accordingly to that, what you can do is you can uh, obviously uh, call everyone to some uh, job call or job meeting or something like that. Uh, you can also start a call directly to start a call in the channel. Check out our paid plans. Now you can only start a call if it's a paid plan. So without that, don't try calling because it wouldn't work. And when it comes to more managing, what you can do is you can also enable your channel's notifications like uh, maybe you don't want this notification for this channel to end up on someone's maybe desktop or something like that. So you can mess around with that as well. And what you can do is you can also make a huddle link like share a URL to huddle in coding like many people can huddle at once in one channel. You can also do that as well. And more things that you can do to mess around with your channel is obviously stuff like um, let's say we're here to browse channels. Here is our coding channel. I'm going to go to that. And obviously you can add different bookmarks if you want to, like create folders to organize bookmarks, add bookmarks to the channel to easily find your team's important files and links and stuff like that. Uh, you can also, again, go back into your settings uh, from over here. And once you go into your settings, what you can do is you can also mess around with other stuff in your workspace. Again, manage your members, manage apps, stuff like that. Uh, and like there's a whole lot of other things that you can do. Uh, that's about it when it comes to managing channels. Now let's come to another great feature that Slack brings you and that feature is called announcements. Yeah. So if you don't know what announcements are, announcements are basically three different things that I discussed with you. It's at everyone at here. Let me just add at here and add channel. So these are the three main announcements that people use to work around in Slack. So let me discuss all three of these announcements in detail. So the first announcement, which is at everyone, what this does is like right now you don't see a prompt because there is no one in uh, the um, in the general or in the workspace. But what at everyone does is it basically tags all the people in this workspace in this channel, uh, not in this channel, it tags all the people in this workspace and tells them to come to this channel. And over here, yeah, after you write add everyone, you can write, please tell me how long is it going to take for the coding files to be delivered. You can add something like that. Uh, and more things that you can do again. So what at everyone does is it tags everyone in your workspace basically. Now what at here does here you can see at here notify every online member in this channel. So basically every person who is online in your workspace will be tagged in this channel uh, and they're going to be told to come to this channel and you can again write 
please tell me how long again you can write something will the project take you can write something like that and then the third and the last is channel which notifies everyone in this channel so basically in detail this prompt notifies everyone in one specific channel so let's say you already write this and you were to write this in maybe random so in the random channel if you were to write here everyone in this channel only like let's say in your workspace you have 25 people but in this random channel you only have 12 people so only those 12 people will be tagged in the channel so if you like put in add everyone what that will do is it will tag everyone in the whole workspace like all the 25 people if you add an at here it will from those 25 people however many are going to be active and online it's going to tag those people and if you do at channel so whatever channel you are writing that message in only in that channel will it give a notification that yes you are tagged so yeah that's basically the difference in these three announcements and these are one of the most useful things when it comes to slack because obviously using these you will call out to your members and people so if you were to go through it all once again three different announcements at everyone at channel and at here at everyone tags everyone in your channels at here notifies only the online members in your workspace and channel and at channel notifies everyone in the specific channel that you wrote into so yeah that's basically what these announcements do and they're extremely useful so i do recommend using them a lot when it comes to working around with a long and big team and a big workspace so yeah now uh let's go ahead and discuss more about the slack features that we have so one of the most obvious and greatest features that slack brings you is its messaging feature so here we have let's say here's our main channel of our coding and here we want to write some message so let's write hi guys welcome to this channel and we can write in this channel we are going to be discussing all the relevant details about this job so make sure to correct everything there we go so obviously this is a normal message and you can send it if you want to. You can also schedule it. Like if you want to send this message at some specific time, you can set a custom time. So let's say I'm going to set a time for, let's say you can set any custom time to be honest. Like let's say you want to keep it for six o'clock. You can keep it today and then you can click on schedule message. And what that will do is it will basically schedule that message for that specific time. So yeah, you can schedule messages and then there's a whole lot of things going on with your messages down here so let me explain everything to you so first of all there's the bold feature which is the most obvious one as you can see now if you click on bold like let's say i want relevant details to be bolded i'm going to select that click on bold and look at that out of all this text relevant details has been bolded and let's say uh, i'm going to set channel and discussing to um, italic we're gonna italicize it and look at that this is italicized this is bold and let's say you want to make a strike through so uh, welcome to about we're gonna set this to strike through so there we go you can italicize your text you can make it bold and you can strike through it and then obviously there's the link so let's say you enter a text so let's write here click on this to be redirected and then you can add a link so let's say i'm going to add youtube.com so what this will do is uh like let's say if i send this message let me send this there we go i just sent it so if the person clicks on this link look at this they're going to be redirected to youtube.com and basically yeah that's what the link does so if i were to just copy this again 
I'm going to copy this, bring it back here to give you more examples. You can also make an ordered list. So let's say here's your first, uh, or wait, I just made a mistake. There we go. So if you hold shift and enter, look at that, you can make more bullet points. So again, and again, and again. So that's how you make bullet points, basically. So look at that. That's how you keep on making bullet points and stuff like that, just to make life simpler for you. And you can also create these bullet points, like let's say you want to change it to these were number points, you can make it to bullet points. You can also add uh, a line over there. So let's say you want to add a totally different section. Look at that, how nice that looks. It, it just makes your text look much more nicer and stuff like that. So like, look at that, it makes it look more like presentable and aesthetic. So I, I just like the whole outlook of it. Now you can also add code in your text. So let's say if I were to add an HTML code. So let's say I'm just going to go here, HTML code uh, sample. Let's just say I'm going to write that and I'm going to show you what it does. So let's go here and let's write a random HTML code into our coding. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go with uh, HTML documents. Let's go with that. And look at that. Here is your normal text. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come here. I'm going to turn on the code option, write the text, and we're going to end our text basically. And yeah, what this does is basically once you add an HTML code, uh, you're basically going to be able to code and stuff like that. So that's how simple and easy it is. So if you were to copy this, bring it here, there we go. We're going to add all these things. Wait, I'm, I'm just going to show you how to mainly make sure it's in one line, like make sure it's not in paragraph like I just did over here. So uh, there's the body. You can write anything if you want to. And then obviously, and the body, there we go. And then and the HTML, there we go. So this is the random text that we wrote. If I enter that, so basically, yeah, that's the code that I just wrote. So what someone can do is someone can copy this. And if they paste it, this is what they're going to be seeing. So yeah, that's basically how you can mess around with code. Uh, this is the code block, you can also uh, make different blocks of codes, uh, just to you know, make your text more presentable, stuff like that. And yeah, so that's your basic coding section. Now, let's talk about different things like uh, you can add different shortcuts and attachments. Now the main shortcuts that you're already going to have are create a post, create a reminder, browse apps and browse all shortcuts. So you can create a post using Slack app. Like if we go here into the main Slack app and we go into the document section here, you can see you can create a post by adding a title. So let's say I'm going to add new post. I'm going to write hi, please support. I'm just going to write that randomly. And once you create a post, you're going to click on share and you can share it to your channel. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share it in coding. I'm going to click on share. And there we go. Post shared in coding. If you go here, look at that. They have shared my post. And yeah, that's basically what shortcuts do. You can also create reminders if you want to. So you can create reminders, you can browse apps, browse all shortcuts, and uh, you know, maybe integrate something if you want to, you can attach files from your computer, like uh, PDFs, PNGs, documents, stuff like that. You can also uh, record a video clip and post it here, you can record audio clips and post it here. Uh, you can also send emojis, which is a fun thing when it comes to slack messages. Uh, you have you can have fun with emojis mess around with it, you know, so let's say uh, you can send this emoji and every emoji has a meaning to it. So as you can see, this means completed, this means taking a look nicely done. Thank you. I agree a round of applause. So these emojis actually have a meaning so you can send these to like have a you know, very chill nice proper worth ethic and stuff like that. So it's a nice way to work around to use emojis and stuff like that. So yeah, you can work around with this as well. And obviously, these are the mentions and announcements as I told you. And then finally, 
uh, this is your height formatting. So basically you can hide this format section if you like don't really want to use it. Like if you think it's pointless, you can just hide it like that. So that's how simple it is. Now, once we have talked about messaging, that's, that's all there is to when it comes to messaging around. Like a few more things if I were to discuss, you can also re react to messages if you want to, like you can react, uh, you can reply in the thread, you can share a file to this message, ask to save item and stuff like that. But yeah, those are like mainly all the things that there are to come when it comes to messaging, you know. So now that we have talked about messaging, let's go ahead and talk about direct messages or in short term DM. Now, if you you probably do know what DM is, DM is basically um, direct messages that you directly message maybe someone in your Slack team. So let's say I'll directly message myself. So let's say I have a teammate called John over here. So one type of messaging is in the general where you message your whole team and one type of messaging is direct. Like let's say John is your um, CEO and you only want to say something to him. Like let's say you want to complain about someone or maybe it's something that the other workers don't know and you want to talk only with John about it. So you can come here and you can start talking about it like uh, just write something like hi John. I hope this message stays between us both only so uh can we talk about the new pay rise and stuff like that you know you can just directly message and yeah that's basically how you direct message and the upper channels is how you message in general to everyone basically so yeah those are all the different messaging techniques now let's go ahead and talk about the slack bot if you don't know what Slackbot is, Slackbot is basically like if you go up here, we can write Slackbot and here we have it. This is the Slackbot. And to add the Slackbot, you're going to go up here, you're just going to write Slackbot. And once you write Slackbot, you're going to click on it and you're going to be redirected to the Slackbot. If you come here, you can see I am a simple bot who can do one or two things, mostly nudges and reminders, really. If you're looking for help, you can check out the help center. So you can message it, hi, just message a hi, and it's a Slack bot. And basically, it's just a bot that you can talk to and you can, you know, have fun using it. You can mess around with it and a lot of stuff like that. Now, you can say, can you tell me something like if you put in that I want to know how to attach a file into the message bar so if you put in that if you're looking for help or if you'd rather ask a human you can use feedback to start a help ticket so yeah your slack bot mainly just gives you again nudges and reminders so can you set a reminder for tomorrow 10 p.m. Now, if you do that, what Slackbot is going to do is it sets a reminder for tomorrow 10 p.m. And uh, yeah, basically you can uh, use it as a reminder for anything. And you can also set a reminder title and more things like that. So basically that's your Slack bot and how you can use it to, you know, mess around with uh, nitty gritty details, stuff like that. Now, more things if you were to discuss are your call features. So let's say over here you're in your general or maybe you're over here and there's a user. Now, obviously you can't see it over here, but if this is some other user, you can just go ahead and you can click on call over here and what that will do is it will call that user. So those are your call features. And again, this is just a direct call. You can again go encoding. Uh, like let's say this is my general. And once you go here, you can go to all members and you can click on start a call. But obviously, as I said, to call in a channel, you need to have a paid plan. You can just randomly call someone or even a whole group in the paid uh, or in the free plan. So yeah, those are basically your basic call features. And uh, it's pretty simple stuff like it's your basic disc like think of it as discord if you have used discord It's just like your normal discord call like all you need to do is just go on their name click on call and it's gonna directly call them And that's how simple and easy it is the mic quality and everything. It's it's pretty decent pretty good So you can mess around with that 
then there's also the sharing links and uh, the keyboard shortcuts like you have different keyboard shortcuts as I told you like again you can add at and there you have it you have shortcuts you can also uh, like go with if you write shortcuts or something like that uh, look at that you also have these shrugs like if you write shrug look at that uh, so these are basically your shortcuts again if you add slash if you add slash here you have your different shortcuts you can also browse by app if you want to you can write different things if you want to like if you write D here you can see me your message displays action text so if you do that you're gonna write a me and me failed with the error no text you obviously have to write something so you write hi and look at that it displays your text with some action again if you write click on slash uh, you can remove or kick user from your current channel uh, if you do an R you can set a reminder we do W look at that we can uh, list users in the current channel if you click on that like wait wait a second let me show you what W does W click on who and look at that users here just you so basically yeah these are basically your shortcuts and again um, let's say uh, open a channel or join a channel so I'm gonna go on that click on that look at this it opens different channels for us and those are basically your shortcuts and though this is how you basically use them you can use these shortcuts to your benefits if you want to uh, they're pretty fun things and pretty fun to work around with mess around with and stuff like that and obviously there's tons more shortcuts all you need to add them is click on slash and look at that it opens a shortcut section for you you can also mute channels you can add different things in it stuff like that create different channels browse apps and stuff like that so there's a lot of a lot of fun things that you can do using your shortcuts like you don't have to actually go to the proper setting section and do it for yourself so yeah those are your shortcut section then there's obviously your search section like if you're like having difficulty in searching something you can just come to search and you can search it easily search it freely uh just to you know help you so you can do that as well like let's say you want to search a user in your channel all you need to do is you're going to write something and it's going to search it for you or if there's some file or even some message so if i write hi search messages and files look at that it shows me all the messages that have said hi or let's say if i want to find a file like let me just show you what it does if i go and create coding i'm gonna upload a file from my computer so i'm just gonna show you what it does so i'm gonna go here i'm gonna upload this upload this file so once it's uploaded what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the name of this file this file is called pexels so I'm gonna go up here write pexels and I'm just gonna wait for it and look at that it has showed me the file called pexels in my channel so that's how you can use search like if you want to find anything in your channel search is best for you because search helps you find anything that you like so yeah that's basically what search does now let's talk about setting up personal preferences again you can set up those personal references by just going into your settings and uh, doing stuff for yourself you can go here at preferences and over here you can set up uh, all these things like enabling desktop notifications you can notify yourself about stuff create keywords modification schedules you can set sounds and appearances about stuff you can also keep uh, like whatever you want in your sidebar like uh, direct messages unreads uh, saved items slack connect stuff like that and as you can see I'm adding these things it's gonna be added or like removed from this left hand sidebar over here you can also set, uh, mess around with the theme like uh, let's say you don't want the theme you can turn it to a light theme uh, you can turn it to a dark theme if you want to you can change the different uh, like uh, colors that you have like let's say I'm gonna go with this ultraviolet one look at that it changes the whole theme and color section for you and it's pretty nice stuff just to you know whatever tickles your funny bone basically you can also create different themes like you can make it from clean to compact if you want to uh, display full names half names whatever you want then again there's your language and region your accessibility section mark is red you have different audio and video options uh, you can check your input level for your mic, connected accounts, privacy avail availability, advanced preferences, settings like that. There's just ton of other things that you can mess around with. 
and uh, yeah though like there are tons and tons of features on slack that you can basically mess with there's also the uh, as i told you the integration section where you can add apps in your slack and obviously we discussed how you can add them uh all you need to do is you're going to go into any uh general of yours i'm just going to close this so once you go in any general you're going to go on this and you're going to click on browse apps now once you do that look at this these are all the different kinds of apps that you can integrate with like google drive zoom trello google calendar twitter outlook calendar stuff like that and all you need to do to integrate them is just click on add and then you're going to sign up and you're going to tell them your account and stuff like that and that's going to add the apps into your slack and from there on out you can do your automation or whatever work you want with those applications so yeah, that's how basically easy it is to uh, yeah just mess around with your apps and integrations and stuff like that. Now let's go ahead and talk about the Slack desktop app. So to download the Slack desktop app, all you need to do is you're going to go on slack.com, uh, download and Windows. And over here, once you're here, you're going to click on Slack for Windows, click on download 64-bit. It's a small process, very small setup. It's going to take you like a few few minutes not even a few minutes a few seconds and once you do that this is basically what your slack is gonna look like so yeah this is your slack and uh, these are gonna be all your channels for your slack app as you can see it's just like uh, your basic uh, browser slack but it's just an app so I'd recommend that you use the browser one but if you're like if you more prefer it more to be in your desktop app then go ahead it's totally whatever pleases you so yeah, so if, if I were to give my conclusion on how Slack is and how good it actually is, then I, I'd be there to say like, it's amazing. Like Slack is one of the greatest, most popular and most used uh, working softwares out there and like tons of HQs and people with businesses use this to run their business, to run their teams, talk around with it and stuff like that. And it's a great software. So I just recommend you get to using it as soon as you can because uh, it's pretty easy to use. As I showed you, it has tons of features. And the thing is, people can have fun with this also because you have different bots and stuff like that. So yeah, that's basically it. That's the whole tutorial for today when it comes to Slack. Now, if I have left anything out in this video, please let me know down in the comments below and I will reply to you as soon as I can and I will explain it to you as soon as I can. And if you have any queries or issues related to this video, please let me know that as well and I'll help you straight away. And if you want to see more long and in-depth tutorials like these for any type of application that you use, please let me know that as well down in the comments and I will make the video as soon as I can for you. But yeah, until then, I hope you like the video and subscribe to the channel because it helps me out a lot. And share this video around with anyone in need for a tutorial like this because uh, obviously if they need help, I'm their guy. But yeah, until then, I hope you all keep having a great and incredible day. That was all from me and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.